Hello crafters! This is Suzanne from A Creative Muse and I went to the flower shop because I have loads of blooming florals. This is the Painter's Garden Collection at Spellbinders designed by Susan Tyranny Cockburn and she did a magnificent job. As you can tell, once I got the hang of it, I was just making one card after the other after the other. I even made a gift bag because why not take something as beautiful and three-dimensional as this and turn it into either a home decor piece, a decorative piece, etc. Alrighty crafters, this is six projects right here. Five cards, one gift bag, and I still have one more die to play with. <laughs> Birds of paradise. Alrighty, let's just go right into it. Let's get started. Here are the products in this release. We have five die sets and one fabulous embossing folder. This is a 3D embossing folder and it is called Bamboo Trellis. L-O-V-E. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And I used this one a few times because I was just having fun with this bamboo trellis 3D embossing folder. Even if you're not doing this type of florals where you do the lifelike florals, etc., the 3D, you can still think about the embossing folder because she's a good one. So that's bamboo trellis, oversized embossing folder, five and a half inch wide, eight and a half inch tall. Okay, and you would use the universal plate system to run this through your die cutting machine. Speaking of die cutting machine, towards the end of this video, I'm going to do a little tutorial. I would recommend if you get these dies and you are interested in doing it and it's not hard, I would highly recommend that you watch Spellbinders videos and their tutorials by Susan Tyranny Cockburn herself. She specializes in this type of crafting. She loves three-dimensional realistic looking flowers. That's her thing. She loves to put a bunch of flowers with sentiments and make cards and all kinds of goodies. So I would highly suggest that you watch her video, but I am still going to do just a quick little tutorial with some little tips because I want to show you that it's not hard and it is very doable. Okay. So we'll do that together. And one other thing, and if you are interested in doing this, that you get the Spellbinders toolkit. I don't have it. It's been on my wish list forever. It's just every time I go to purchase it, I'm like, but I could get something else <laughs> because I have a lot of floral tools already. And we'll talk about why that has been a issue with me making these florals too, because I'm all over the place with my tools. But let's continue with the die sets. So we have five dies. First up, let's talk about the Gerber Daisy and Ladybugs. This is a six piece die set, the largest Gerber Daisy almost three inches and then we have another one here now let me pull out this die set and show you something else too which is nifty on the dies you'll see here times two times two that means to cut this twice that bit which would be the centers cut that three times this is to make one flower these are some little extra bits if you want to use them you don't have to she shows you how to use them but you don't have to you can also just put gems you can put prills i will put a link at spellbinders for prills prills are little beads and i have my prills from a while back because i was gonna do florals years ago never ever did it i have all the tools and everything ready for it and it's like i like how just like the wax seal kit how Spellbinders packaged it together. Same thing with the florals if you want to do this type of crafting, okay? That's why I'm saying I would recommend staying in that family and just playing right here because you can do a lot with all these wonderful die sets. And a lot of them go on sale too from time to time. And the leaves, two times each, okay? Let me show you what a prill is. Okay, maybe I shouldn't do this sidebar yet, but okay, I'm going to do this sidebar real quick. This is my storage container. These are prills. See, I have different brands. The one that is sold at Spellbinders is this brand, okay? Prills are little centers that you sprinkle in the middle. This is the most popular brand, and this is the one Spellbinders does carry. And I've had this for about four or five years, okay? As you can see, brand new, never used. Bought it at a craft fair. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. I have bigger prills. So you can get prills, little centers. I have this as well. These are those, um, these are centers for the florals as well. Flower stamens, okay? You could put these in here if you wish. I didn't, but I do have them in different sizes. See, brand new package again. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. 
Moreover, yeah, I'm obviously going into a sidebar even before I get started in the video. Because that's why I was saying, the Spellbinders Toolkit, really good. These are all my tools, all different brands, and this is my little foam. All of this comes packaged in her toolkit, and i show you a picture here, including what you would use to do the foam on, and also it includes a tool-in-one with all the attachments to get the veining, and it has a little ball stylus. See, I'm using all past things that I bought to do it, and now I'm getting frustrated because I'm watching her video, and I'm like, oh, but I don't have that. I should have gotten that. She has a leaf pad. I don't have a leaf pad, that type of thing. So I'm sort of hopscotching, but if you are interested in doing this, which is really pretty, Mother's Day is coming up. Love. Birthday cards. Love. Great to stick in gift bags for friends, family, loved ones co-workers even if you don't want to mail it it's just so worth it put it on projects yeah <laughs> that pretty look at them mm -hmm. all right one last thing and you'll also need a foam pad as you can see right now i'm into like four or five different brands this is why it took me waiting for spellbinders to do that wax seal kit because that's an all-in-one this is the same principle okay all-in-one I would recommend going that route instead of how I did it because now I'm spending much more money than I would have if I had just gotten the Spellbinders toolkit in the first place. But I don't think it was available when I first started collecting all this stuff. <laughs> Alrighty, sidebar done. So we have Gerber Daisy and Ladybugs. Love. Next, we have... Can you imagine I did a sidebar in between? It needs to be said because if this is like really speaking to you and you're new, get the toolkit. Zinnia. This one again, she said to cut it twice. And you can vary this. You can play with it any way you want. But if you wanted to go how the die set was originally intended, you see the layout here. So this is this one right here. So you would cut two and then two more and then you do the leaves two to three times. Those are the centers. Here's another center. That's Zinnia. Zinnia, the largest one, two inches. Next, this one, not a bad price point either and a great place to start. Pansy. You cut this one time, the leaves two times, and then this other blooming part two times. And in this one, you need to watch the video in terms of how to put it together. Once you get the hang of it, then it's super easy. Let me give you the Pansy made up. One and a half by like one and three quarter. Look at my pansy card. You know I was excited when I made this one. Look how pretty that is. Then I did a Google search of the pansy, saw all the colors. Okay, I'll come back to that one. <laughs> exciting though, exciting. You know when you guys tell me I get excited by a dye? I was getting excited by these florals. Oh yes, one after the other. I was like, oh, oh, oh. This is another one. The distance from having no idea how to do it to doing it, super short, okay? Made easier with the right tools and the right paper. You can't just use any cardstock doing it. I'm gonna obviously be interjecting sidebars during this video. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Carolina Allspice. Look at this one. This is really nifty. You cut this twice and then you layer it up and then you have this leaf, um, you have this branch. Oh, goodness. Watch her video and she'll give you the proper pronunciation of everything and tell you all oh, what the centers are and everything. I'm giving you the overview, okay? <laughs> one and a half inch and then the branch three and a half by two and a quarter now when you have something like this of course you can use this mix and match the sets yeah trust me most people that are recipients are for you you do you if you wanted to mix this with this go ahead if you wanted to use these leaves with that go ahead so you can stick with how the real flower is intended and then you can play like, I played with the first card that I made from her last year. I showed you this one. Still have it because I wanted to keep this as an example. And I love how it turned out, but I stepped up my game by watching her videos and just doing it correctly because this time I wasn't using the right cardstock. Another sidebar. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, we have Bird of Paradise. This is the one that I am going to have another video with you guys because the way the colors look and everything. So I didn't get around to this one, but there's a lot of colors. Let me show you an example here, but I love the leaf and this is definitely up my alley. Jamaica, tropical. Yes, <laughs> love this. Maybe that's why I was overthinking it. This was the first one I made and this is with the pansy die set. Here I use yellow markers and then some purples. 
Olo markers. That's the purple Olo marker I played with. When you're coloring with alcohol markers, you're gonna do it on the two sides, front and back, okay? And this is the only thing that if you are gonna make this, I would highly suggest it, especially if you're gonna use alcohol markers and not just ink. The paper packs I have from before, those are specialty floral making paper, but it's for ink blending. This one, you can use alcohol markers on. This is Susan's Garden Specialty Cardstock. After doing all of these cards, I'm buying another pack of this because, yes, it's good. So this is on that Susan Specialty Cardstock with my Copic markers, even the leaves. I just layered up the florals and then tucked in all the leaves right here. One of my favorites, you guys know what that is. If you haven't watched my videos, but if you have, you know what I'm bringing out. Fluted Classics. This is Fluted Classic Circles. Four pansies on top of a Fluted Classic foundation here. And then all on this background with that beautiful Bamboo Trellis 3D embossing folder with some wonderful gold splatter yeah i'm into splattering right now too I'm in. so fluted classic circles great foundation to build on any florals it's a great place to start on your background okay so that's popped off of this and then the thanks that's coming in back to another favorite of mine outline sentiments this is a past kit club die set so you can only purchase this at spellbinders okay love and here I use the thanks. And I did the thanks in this green colorway, kind of like nature to pick up back on the leaves. I did dark green and then a light green. I like this. I may explore that colorway again. Dark green for the shadow and then light green on top. I think it's very pretty together. And I was really matching this was my thinking. So this is my nature card. And then of course I still had to put a little bling in there. Gold mixed gems, the tiny crystal part of it, and then some other jewels from my stash. In the centers here, I did put the same mica gold paint, okay, in the centers. First card, happy. Look at that embossing folder. Let's just really enjoy bamboo trellis. Thumbs up for bamboo trellis. Up next, first card led into the second card. The only thing that is different, I changed the florals. Bamboo in the background, I went from a brown cardstock base to a black cardstock base. Same metallic splatter on both. And then fluted classic circles, fluted classic ovals. I'm putting them side by side so you can see how I played with it. This one I went over to the side. I just cut the edge off here. These are both five by seven cards. Well, this is the true five by seven. This is a little bit shorter. I also came in with yellow florals. And I went a different colorway. And the mistake I made here, I fixed it over here. <laughs> I started off too bright with this one, but I didn't want to waste it. And I, then I went lighter and a different shades of yellow. I kept the same purple. Here I went a completely different shade of Copic yellow markers. I used Y19 for these. And this one is the Zinnia. Isn't she pretty? Comes together super easy. Now notice something that I did different. These are little itty bitty centers that Susan was taking her time doing and I was like, you know what? No. And that's what I was saying. You don't have to continue all the way in if you don't want. I did the florals here, did that, which is this lighter yellow, then just put a pearl in the center. And I had this brown pearl from my stash, this dark brown chocolate pearl that looked like a center. I could have done pearls too, those little beads in there. And notice this time, same die set, outline sentiments. And this time I use a congrats, black with gold. And then this is like a brown here again, gold mixed gems. One card led into the other, bamboo trellis again. Look at that bamboo trellis, both colorways, brown and black in the background. Isn't that beautiful? love and you just layer this up with a tutorial i'm going to show you like a general overview of how easy it is then you can watch her videos to get more specific if you want to really get into you know exact details but you don't have to but wow right and i love these leaves look at this leaves i could have used these over here you know mix and match i don't think there's a flower police to come and say hey that doesn't go with that it's just have fun you do you and have fun cute right this card 
which is a five by seven was inspired by this frame. I have been wanting to use this frame that I got on sale for basically nothing last year. That one is the sketched florals and frame. This is a past kit club item, so we can only be purchased at Spellbinders. And in the center, so there's a cut line on the inside. Pop that out. I did use a different embossing folder here. Flower Frenzy, that's the 3D embossing so folder I use. Little navy blue gems from my stash, look at that navy rose gold and then shades of tan and brown and mixing up textured background again i was feeling browns touch a navy with this coral flower that was my thinking the flower i used gerber daisy with the ladybug i didn't use the little ladybug though she can show you how she pops these little ladybugs i think that's her signature like ooh, put a ladybug used all this right here i didn't use these little bits there is a special thing that she has when she's making them and i don't have it so i was like okay it was just too small for me to work with but here's the gerber daisy layered up and then i did the centers and then there are the leaves in a dark chocolate brown this is basil card shop cardstock it actually held with me putting a lot of force on it with my um floral tool i was surprised it didn't crack like crazy but I wouldn't say that it could handle all of this because this now you spritz and you form and you do more stuff with. But it held up though, the basil. And that's on this card base. On the inside, I stamped, you make me smile. So the outside, it says, love you more. Inside, you make me smile with the butterflies. That's from the Floral Reflection Sentiments. I bought this and was dying to use it. Finally, <laughs> I used it. I love the font. Look at that font. Love you more. Cute little die set three dollars during the sales at Spellbinders. So I was using a few things I got on super sale. Okay. The love you more. This is angled. So if you do get this set, I'll put a description and links below, but it goes at an angle. You can't put it straight, but it's cute. Three dollars and it comes with the shadow and everything. Look at that. Just in time for Valentine's. And then look at that frame. And then I did the big floral right here. That's why I had to do it five by seven because look how big this Gerber Daisy is. I could have gone smaller, used this one. They kind of look alike too. So I could have also used the Zinnia right here. You could then, then go more into the true A2 if you wish. Both of these would be great on slimline as well. And I did do one slimline. I wanted to have the embossing folder detail in here with the sentiment and then the floral and then out here more muted. So you can definitely still see the frame and enjoy the frame. Moving on. Depending on how long this video is, I may do a split just in case, because I'm thinking with the tutorial too, you guys know I like to give lots of tips and tricks and then that takes time. So I may do part one, part two. We'll see. When I'm playing with these floral dyes, I kind of like to make, instead of just one flower, I'll make two or three. So I did make a second flower. I did two shades in the same family of Copic marker. So this is one shade lighter than this one. 21, 22, and 24 are markers, okay? So I built these two at the same time, but as you can see, two different colorways. And I was gonna put the two of them on the same card, but when the alcohol marker dried back, she was so much lighter than this one. I was like, mm, okay, let me split them up. And why not get two for one? One flower, one card, another flower, another card, or project. So this led into this. So we're back to the Gerber Daisy. And this time, didn't use any leaves. So here, I use the leaves in all my other examples, but you don't have to use the leaves if you don't want to. I didn't want to, so I didn't. And what I did with this now, I took a gift bag, three in a pack for $2 or something gift bag, and turned it into something special. With everything okay. you see here, I did pull product from it. So shop your stash. I was shopping my stash. There is a daisy made up with that same center. I like this dark brown pearl center. In the background here, I was thinking of using Fluted Classics, but I decided to go with a die set that I had bought on sale and it's been sitting there waiting to be played with. This one is called Rings Around a Circle. First, I had cut it in this colorway, but it didn't go with the flow. So I kept this whole bag like dark coral into a peachy coral with the flowers. I did the flower and it had to go with everything else. That's this size. The largest die in this one, four inches. Super duper cute with that scallop. You get three of them in. This is great too if you make a lot of embellishments and wands and things like that, that you could put your rosettes on. This is a great die set for that. Rings around the circle or ring around the rosy. <laughs> it's all like ring around the rosy, right? <laughs> so rings around the circle with the flower on top, no leaves. 
background here. It is wrapped around this time, I remembered. Sealed twine. Instead of always using it on carts, here I'm using it on a bag. And the oversized embossing folders. This is not a small little bag. She is five by eight and a quarter. These oversized embossing folders, remember, are five and a half inch wide, eight and a half inch tall. So they can go on bigger gift bags. This is just to dress up a gift bag. Why not do that for a special friend or loved one? This is using the orange peel quilt embossing folder. You guys know I love this, and this is a 3D embossing folder. This is the backside of it, and I did do the same thing I did when the first time I used this embossing folder. Textured cardstock and on the backside. So you're getting lots of texture with this. Can you see that? And look at the florals up close. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> then I put some strong double-sided tape. You know, wrap this round, tape it down, and tape the whole thing down good. No wet glue, because it's going to end up curling the bag. Remember, the bag is not super thick and this is not an expensive bag but the bag now has a special look this is coming back into another favorite of mine you guys must be so sick of seeing this but i love it assorted tags and i use the big tag normally you see this one and you're going to see it on one of my other examples here that one there love assorted tags again pulled out because i had it out already anyway from the previous card floral reflection sentiments and i stamped out a gift for you heat embossed Pop this up a little bit. Use some gold mixed gems. The smallest crystals. That's my new thing now is using these small ones too. Because they normally stay on my package. I'm going to start using them up. Using my stash. And that is my gift bag. So just from this one floral. Look at everything else that you can make. And you could use just one of them on a card. You don't have to go three, four, five. You don't always have to do this if you don't want to. One is enough. And I still think it's a great focal point with that little tag sticking out. Love. So my little gift bag is like so. Look at that. Yeah. Ready to go. So I can make florals for that. And you can use them on any 3D project. Up next. This is still the Gerber Daisy. Why? When I had done these two. I saw an example where somebody looked like they curved it a different way, like this. And I wanted to also do it in pink. And this is now with, I can't remember what this is, what color this is. It's an RV marker. I should have noted it. And then the same centers. Okay, so you can see this is Susan's way. This is me just playing. Okay. Have fun. I had fun both ways. Are you mad at it? Because I think a friend would love to get this card from me. So you don't have to always stick to the you know, the way it should be. You can still have fun. Gerber Daisy again, curved out. And there are the leaves in green. Before you saw the leaves here in brown. First die. I had this in my Spellbinders wish list forever. And with the last sale, after Christmas, I think it was, on the half slim line oval, she went down to a price that I was like, time to get you. <laughs> so <laughs> this is a super cute set. Let me tell you how much it is. I think it is eight and a half inch tall. Yeah, eight and a half inch tall. And when you put these two sides together, it becomes three and a half inch wide. You see it? On a slimline base. Isn't that awesome? This was designed by Becca Feakin for Spellbinders. Every time I have it in my cart, but I see something else, so I'm like, okay, let me put that back. Let me get this. And then it would go on sale. And I was like, but I want to get that instead. We're working in a budget, you know? So I finally got it and I'm so happy I did. I think it is so beautiful. Becca and Susan together just working so well. The elegance of this background and then these florals. Love. You can use any florals too. You could use the new Club Blooms with this die set as well. Love. And it does come with Beautiful Friend and these little bits. As you can see, I went a different way because the beautiful friend, see how it's that way where it sticks off? I wanted to do something just a little different. Yana came in to play with that one. So I actually have three people here playing. I have Becca Feakin, Susan, and Yana. This is from Yana's new release, the Anemone Blooms Collection. I showed you this. I will link the video here. I used the Hello from the Wonderful Script right there. And then the Friend from the Anemone Glimmer Blooms. You know, love, right? Yeah, look at that. Look how it cuts so intricate. I did purposely put the gem there. It does have the eye, but I put that there as an eye anyway, that jewel gem. And then I okay. did splatter on 
like a cream textured cardstock here with some gold mica paint again. I did put the dark brown, same dark brown I was using for here. See how like one card led into the other? You can see my progression. I didn't do them all in one day, but like over two days, I made all of this. Not as hard as I was thinking. I was like, oh goodness, this is going to be hard, but short distance to learn how to do this. And look how this layers up. I love this die set, the half slim line. So pretty. So there's the hello friend, dark brown with my favorite cardstock. You guys know brushed gold cardstock right there for the friend on top. On the inside, because if you're like, why is this here? Sentimental greeting stamps. This is the add-on for the new stitching die of the month. And I used You Brighten My Every Day. So even though this is to work with the stitching like I did here, where we stamp all of this in the center, I had said it when I showed you guys this, that this can go everywhere. Outside of a card, inside of a card, because these are great all-occasion sentiments. Birthdays, sending hugs, make a wish thinking of you. Merry Christmas. Even holiday is in here. Hope you get well soon. So I did hello friend. You brighten my every day. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Love this little set. There's a florals on a slim line. Two of them. And I did these two exact same color. And I did it again because of how I did two different colors here. I was playing with my Copic markers and feeling how to do this technique, but I didn't want to waste anything. So then I went back one more time and I love how this one turned out. And you can make a bunch of these florals in every color and have the same base and just go factory mode if you want to. Why not? And lastly, I was again shopping my stash and shopping what I got on sale and played. This is the Carolina Allspice. And I kept this one closer to where Susan's video was. She used a maroon Olo marker. I was using Copic markers, and I'll tell you why when we get to the little mini tutorial. This is RV69. And so when I looked at the flower on Google, it's this kind of colorway. And you layer it up. You don't have to worry about a center because you play with these and you do a thing where you keep on. I have one here that I'll show you how to do it with the foam. You have to have the foam to get that lift on it, okay? Super cute. Look at that. <laughs> the zinnia and so this is three of these leaves and then a whole bunch of zinnia and that's how these are these are like a little bunch of them on a branch and you can mix and match the large two smalls etc okay. what i did get on sale super sale this is susan's geranium and antique wooden bucket i bought this on one of those sales i think from the warehouse sale from last year and it was just sitting there waiting for an opportunity see this one comes with florals already all I used was the bucket. Here's some leaves too. So you could watch Susan's video on Spellbinders or on Susan's YouTube channel. She does have a YouTube channel and a Facebook as well. Okay, with her name, Susan Tyranny Cockburn. I'm putting it again here just so you can see the spelling. And you can make this whole thing. But I have been wanting to use this bucket. So I pulled out my bucket and I did uh -huh. Copic Friendly Paper. Colored it up with my Copic markers. These are some E70 markers. I did some C markers here for the handle. Made my little bucket. The bucket measures almost three inches by three and an eighth, okay? Super cute and you let the little handle hang down. So I wanted to still enjoy the bucket here and I did pop this little piece off. Then after I made the bucket, then I started doing tucking. This is a five by seven just so it had enough room for the bucket and the blooms and these branches here. And I knew when I was playing with it, I knew I wanted to have a bunch up here, but I didn't want to have it too crowded that you couldn't see that there were individual branches. And then I knew I wanted to have one laying off the side like it fell off, but it's still pretty. <laughs> I was going for it. If you guys know when I get excited and you hear me laughing, that means I was having a blast while I made this little card here. You just don't know. It was like, oh, oh, I could do this. Oh, let me put that there. Oh, <laughs> have fun. That's the main thing. Just tell yourself, I'm going to have fun with this. I've always been interested in it. I've been interested in making flowers like this for years because I got so sick of buying flowers at $5 a shot or $6 a shot and then you use them and then you're like, or I was hoarding them, waiting for projects. And I was like, you know, I'm going to make my flowers. It was buying too many separate things to get there. This is more, again, just like the wax seal, 
contained. And when it's contained, it becomes easier for me to say, you know what, I'm going to do it. I have also bought some of her florals myself without having them sent to me by Spellbinders to play with. So, you know, when they offer these, like, Suzanne, you want to play with these? I'm like, oh, yes, I will, because I get excited by it, because I did have fun playing with the only one I did get before. And then I bought some after this one with the sale. It was just time. But this now made me sit down and really watch her video, watch her process, because I got the paper. Once I got her paper, that's when I was able to open up. This is floral forming paper, but I couldn't use my Copic markers on it. I would have ruined my markers. So I was limited here. Once I bought her cardstock, then I opened up my little gate and my horse ran through. <laughs> I let my own horse out the gate. <laughs> oh gosh, let me stop. All right, crowders. So again, this is on the same bamboo trellis with no splatter. I was thinking of doing splatter. I was like, no, stop the splatter. Roll back my splatter and just enjoy this chocolate cardstock. Put this here, then the florals. I could have, looking at it now, pulled out. If you wanted to add that break, like how I did here and here, I would have used Fluty Classic Oval, like a big oval here. To break it away from this because right now it is brown into brown with the florals i could have gone that way or even gone like this with the kind of a gold or a tan or some different color in the back that's another option i could have gone with which i just realized now <laughs> but i don't mind what i did because here it looks more organic to me i'm loving this and i could have done splatter too had even more fun now here Handmade with love. This is a glimmer hot foil set. It's called Sealed Glimmer Sentiments. This came out with the Sealed by Spellbinders wax kit. Here are the sentiments. I just printed it out just so I could see them easier. You get this some? set, then you would have the packaging. I did use Handmade with Love. And then again, one of my favorite tags, out of assorted tags, this little baby right here. Cut it out. I put a little bit of twine right there. Here I'm using. Spellbinders green gems and then another shade of green gem from my stash. Didn't put anything here, just a little bit of card making embellishment fun, but not over the top. This one goes on sale a lot, the bucket. This was on my wish list. When I decided to get it, I was like, okay, I'm gonna get one of them. There is the bucket, there is also the vase or vase, and there's a rain boot. I think there is something else. I'll put a link below for all of them. You'll see this one first. I'll put bucket and then I'll put the others underneath it if you want to see the rest. Because if they are on super sale, why not? Or maybe have them in your wish list for the future. Now that I played with it, I think I'm going to get that, um, the little vase, 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 vase. I call it vase. Okay. Jamaica. <laughs> We call it Vaz. Okay, crafters. I just wanted to do a little summary here. Here is Suzanne's garden. We have Susan's painter's garden collection. Two thumbs up for floral, 3D fun, and going beyond a card into making projects. Love. Alrighty, crafters. Now let's get into that tutorial. Until the next video, stay crafty, my friends. Bye.